Hi everyone, it's Bobby. I am back with another project for you. This one is using the beautiful collection from Country Craft Creations called What's Brewing. Um, this is an 8.5 by 8.5 album with a 2 inch spine. On the front I've used the design paper with three of the cut aparts that I've double matted with a burgundy and white. Uh, the burgundy is a discontinued color from Country Craft Creations. And on the spine I used the um, Simple Stories. This is a gingham. I'm not sure which collection it comes from, but I'll try to put that in the... I, I do have it when I did the haul. I gave a, a link to it. And then the back is just like the front without the extra embellishments. And on the front I used some small dies, um, little circle ovals not ovals, circles, scallop circles, uh, with a die from my stash, and then I had these little fibers in my stash, and I just added those in there. So when you open it, in the cover we have a double pocket. I've used that, um, it might be Cartabella. Let me look real quick, and I'll tell you for sure. Let me look here. No, it's Simple Stories, and it is from Life in Bloom. It's a large gingham on the one side and a small gingham on the other, but it is Simple Stories. Okay. And we have a double pocket, and I have used uh, two of the prints from the collection. Actually, I didn't use two prints. I used one print from the collection. And these... Uh, I have listed in my haul. So what I have in the second pocket is this little folder I created and this is using a piece of the stripe paper from the collection and I just printed this from the internet. It was a free um, item and it was how to make iced coffees and my grandson lo loves these. So I printed out the picture and the directions how to make iced coffee and it took two little pieces for the directions and then I have some plain paper in the back so when they find other recipes and things they like uh, for drinks to make they can add them there. And then this is just a junk envelope a return envelope that came in some mail and I just put a piece of the design paper inside and I covered it with a craft made a little tab with an eyelid and I put a teapot on it that goes in that pocket and then a small envelope made with the mini punch board and I just put I got a laminator several months ago and I had not used it at all so I got it out and uh, laminated some of these cut aparts and they look so cute you can see both sides and this is a Tim Holtz card it says smile and faith and this is one of the cut aparts and on the envelope I just put a piece of tulle, some lace, and a couple of cut aparts or um, embellishments. I think they're Tim Holtz embellishments. On page one, uh, this is just a double pocket where I've turned down both corners. Had a couple of little coffee pots from a die in my stash. This is a graphic 45 tag, just plain on the back. And then this is a hidden paper clip, and there are tons of them out there on the internet. The paper clips have been around for a long time, but most of them left the backside exposed. And I've made them before, but wasn't one of my favorites because I didn't like the naked paper clips showing. But this is really a neat idea. So I used two of the smaller cut aparts and just uh, and the ground, the gray artisan, and I made my own. So I thought it made a really cute little embellishment and it just fits over the page and then when you turn it to the other side you have another embellishment and not the naked paper clip so this is a kind of a library style pocket and I have a bookmark in there but you can also journal on the back and in the pocket I have another one of the laminated cut aparts 
in one of the Tim Holtz mini paper dolls and it's just tucked into one piece of the border trim that came in the collection. <coughs> and towards the bottom I have um, two coffee cups that I used to dye that I have in my stash and a doily, another little coffee pot or coffee pot, coffee cup and then a spoon I cut out of uh, glitter. And in the beginning I had uh, like the fibers on the front I had some of those down here at the bottom and they were just too bulky so I took them out and I put a piece of a doily down there um, and it looks more like a tablecloth so I like that better. <coughs> Okay, page two. This is one of the cut aparts. Um, and I just fussy cut out the the pot and the cup, put it on some gray artisan, and then backed it with a scallop die. Another envelope with a mini punch board, and I, this is from a die in my stash that cuts out these little note papers. And I just put a couple of those in there. And this is a double pocket. And let me see, here's a piece of cardstock. Here's the second pocket. Doesn't have anything in it right now. And this just holds a little notepad. And then on this side it has a tuck spot where you can put stuff in it. Right here. And then I didn't put a closure on it because it's going to be in the pocket. It doesn't really need a magnet or anything. So I put a little piece of burlap, two little mini tags, and an arrow. And that's all that's in there. And when we flip it over, we have a double pocket. Nothing in it yet, because I still I'm researching stuff on the internet for more coffee and tea recipes that they might like. And this has a piece of tool back here, a piece of um, embroidered lace, and a butterfly. And then this is a little booklet, opens out like this, and it's just got some coffee dyed paper held with a Velcro dot. And then this is just three little pieces with a label, or um, a word that says rise and shine, a button, and a piece of lace. I thought that was really cute to finish that page out. And on this side, this is just four strips, two this way, and two this way, just woven in together, and it makes four pockets. So we've got cut aparts here and here, and then we have tags and embellishments in the other two pockets, here and here, and then I mounted this on a piece of gray artisan so that I'd have another pocket back here so you could make a larger embellishment, another tag or what have you. And then we have a pocket. And here I found um, the best iced coffee recipes and this is recipes for the syrups. We have iced vanilla, mocha, caramel macchiato, and a simple syrup. And then it gives you the directions for pair preparing each of the syrups. And that was another free printout. Here we have another pocket with note paper, another little embellishment with two buttons, and this is a graphic 45 clock um, die that cuts this out. I had these little hands in my stash and I just printed out time for coffee on Word. And then over here we have a wrap around belly band so I cut it out of the tan. I added some burlap, one of the cut aparts, and some buttons. Here's another one of the cut aparts. This is one that was um, run through the laminator. And then we have a little pocket with a tag here. Then this big tag comes out. And in it I have a glassine bag with all the leftover cut aparts that I had. goes in here and flip it over and there's the other half of the belly band this was a little envelope that I had in my stash and I just cut it off at the end of this piece here rounded the edges 
and inked it and then added some of the design paper so it gives you another little pocket right here. This is another paper clip. Really doesn't have any purpose other than just to look cute, but you could tuck something under it if you wanted to. And then we have another tag with a pocket. Nothing in it at the moment, but it is a pocket. So there's that. And then on this side, we have another double pocket. We have one back here. And then this is another envelope. And I'll show you in the tutorial how I go about cutting this out. It's really easy to do. I have a butterfly up here, uh, one of the cut aparts, and a little label from my stash. And then we go to the last page. And we have the gingham again. Another large tag. And there's room on the back that you can put more recipes or you can journal with a white gel pen, whatever. And we have a little trifold here that gives you actually three spots. There's one, this is too wide I think, but there, well I did leave it there. See it's open. Couldn't get my fingernail under there. This is a small tag, just a piece of embroidered lace with a mushroom and a little label. And then I have a couple more of those little papers in here, little journaling spots. And then on the back cover, we have this fold, and it goes to an angle. And in these two pockets, we have mini tags that um, have a cut apart, a piece of lace and tool on it. And we have another one down here. And here we have a cut apart in this pocket. And this is a graphic 45 coin envelope. I still need to put my thread, my twine on the back. But we made this in the very beginning, so it is in the tutorial. And there is a full tutorial on um, the album cover, the hinge, and the pages. For the dimensions on each of the pockets and the tags, you'll need to watch the tutorial because all the measurements for those are given in the tutorial. So that is my album. I hope you like it. I had a lot of fun creating it just because it was something different. And I, for the spine, the um, disc spine, oh, that fell out of here. It's not full enough yet, so this will fall out until I fill it up and it gets tight in there. Uh, I followed a tutorial by Michelle Allen, who is one of the Country Craft Creation Designers. It was a very good tutorial, and I'll put a link in the description box to her tutorial as well. So thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I hope you'll watch the tutorial. If this is something you think you might want to make, I would love to see photos of your finished project. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hello and welcome. It's Bobby, and I am back with a new project starting today. I have wrapped an album cover in the Winter Gray Artisan. It's 8.5 by 8.5 with a 2 inch spine. And I've added the Simple Stories Gingham on the inside, and this is my colors. And I have the sizes and the brand name and the colors of each of the papers I've used on the inside on your cut list. So the first thing I want to do is to make the binding system for these discs. Now I'm following a tutorial by Michelle Allen. She's another one of our design team members on Scrapbookers. Country Craft Creations, I should say. Where, oh, here it is. So I have a piece of the Gray Artisan that is four and a half by eight and a quarter, and I have scored it at one and a quarter, one and three quarters, two and a quarter, two and three quarters, and three and a quarter. So you've got five scores. And I'm going to fold down the center. Then on that first score from the center, you're going to fold towards you. Yep, it's folded on 
it looked like it was crooked. And then on the next one, we're going to fold away from you, back towards the center. Doesn't look like it. I guess it is. It's not matching up perfectly, though. Oh, it's really strange. I guess it'll be all right. I'll pull this over just a little bit. And then do the same thing on the other side. Catch up my sleeve there. And we're going to fold towards us. And away. It's not matching up as good as Michelle's did. Let me see what it looks like. Well, it matches up underneath, so I guess it's all right. Okay, the next thing we want to do is take a one inch piece. Um, it's one inch wide, eight and a quarter long, and it is going to go over this center piece. This is what's going to make our hinge. And see how it looks like she called it a triangle. Reminds me of a little teepee. <laughs> but this is going to glue over this center part just to strengthen it. So I'm going to put some glue on that. And I will put in the um, description box a link to Michelle's tutorial for this project. The first time I saw this was over a year ago. And it was at CHA. But the people who made the albums with it had all their discs exposed on the spine and I didn't like it so I didn't order anything and then after Michelle did it and her discs were inside I thought well that's really cool I liked it so I bought the discs and I bought the tool to punch the holes but I never did anything with it I stayed busy with other things and I just didn't do anything with it so I decided now was the time. So I'm going to burnish this down on that center part. Now what we need to do, this is eight and a quarter. So my center is going to be four and an eighth. So I am going to make a little tick mark at four and one eighth. to do four and one eighth. Alright, let me open the tool. I haven't even used the tool yet. I gotta take it out of its packaging. These plastic wrap packages aren't easy to get into. Take me a second, I'll be right there. As I get this open. I should have done that before I started the video, shouldn't I? I forgot about it though. Okay. It's not easy to get into. This tool is by uh, We Are Memory Keepers. I'm getting there. <clears throat> okay, I got it. Okay. Now to unlock it. And it has a center mark right here. So I'm going to line that up with my center little mark I made here. I'm going to push that in. Well, 
Oh, I'm in the wrong place. Right there. Push that all the way in. And punch. Now, as we move down, we're going to line up this little, she called it a mushroom. Looks like an arrow to me. I always see everything different. We're going to line it up in that previous punch and make sure it lays down on this ledge. And then we're going to punch it again. And one more time. And then we're going to flip it over. Well, come on out of there. There we go. I'm going to flip it over and do two more the other direction so we have a total of five. And one more time. This is really neat. I like this. Okay. So next, we can glue it together. So we need glue on these two little half inch strips here. to lap over to this side. And press it down. Ta -dum -ta -dum, this. Let me press it down. Press this side down. And now we'll do this side. Just glue it all together. Couldn't be any easier, could it? This wasn't hard at all. And this is your whole binding system. Can't believe I thought I wouldn't like it. I just didn't like it exposed, I guess, is all it was. Okay, now I'm going to fold this one in and burnish it again. discs will sit in these slots, supposedly. How do they go? There, oops. there they go. And they just, and then your pages will go on there too. So we're going to have five of those in there. And it is going to sit right here. Okay, sorry about that. Camera shut off on me. And I didn't even realize it. Um, we had one more thing to do to this. I had two 3 8 inch strips of this um, beach grass that need to go along the edge of this. So, And I put one down before I realized the camera had shut off. These are 3 8 inch wide and they are uh, 8 and 1 8 long because the hinge is 8 and a quarter. I want it to be just a little bit shorter so the gray shows. So we'll put this other one down. Oops. That's like so. Popped up. This is going to sit right down the center of that. Very cool, huh? Let me get this pencil line off of here. Okie doke. Now we can glue this down.
Okie dokie. Sit this right down the center. Just like that. Give it a few seconds to dry, and then I want to measure a piece of scrap paper so I can see how long I want my pages to be. So let me grab a scrap here. How long is this? That's plenty long enough. I just want to punch some holes in it so I can see how far out the paper is going to extend because I don't know. Here's three and it doesn't have to be the size of the book. I just want it to sit These fit tight. I wonder if Michelle's fit that tight. But they spin good, so I guess that's all that matters. Three. This is cheapo paper, so it's going to bend and act silly. There. I just want to be able to close the book and see how far out this is going to extend so I know how long my pages can be. And I want to... Here is the end of the... line by the end of the oh when it's all the way closed here's the end of the design paper okay so I'm take this out and that means my pages can be eight seven and three quarters. That's to the edge of the paper. So let's cut it at seven and a half. Actually, I'll cut it right where it is. So that's seven and three quarters. Seven and three quarters. Is right on that mark. And I don't want it to be right to the design paper, so I'm going to take another quarter off. So there's what our page sizes are going to be. Eight by seven and a half. There we go. Okay. Now, I've got to cut some paper. So I will be back once I get that done and we'll start putting some pages in there and decorating them and just making it beautiful.
Okay, thanks for watching. I'll be back shortly. Okay, I am ready to start putting some of this together. So let's get started. On the inside cover, on the left hand side, I'm going to have this triple pocket and I want, I have a piece that is five by seven and a half, three by seven and a half, and two by seven and a half. So I want them to be an inch and a half apart. So this one is five, so I am going to attach this one at three and a half just on the sides. Only on the sides. And we will put this on the inside left side of the cover. And there is three and a half. And I've just used a corner rounder, a small one, just to round the edges. And then this one will attach at the very bottom and we will glue it on both short sides and the long side that is not rounded. And we will put this down at the very bottom like that. Now we can burnish. I'm going to lay this aside for a second and we will glue down these two pieces that is the front side of page one. Now this um, background stamping that I did lightly is Tim Holtz and it is from the Ledger script set and it's got two stamps in it. And I just used a little bit of that with black soot. And then these two pieces, this is one 12 inch strip and it's going to go like this and like this. So we will have a tuck spot here, 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 and here. And this was a 12, 12 inch strip and I cut one piece off at about five and an eighth. And the other piece is just over four and a quarter and I'm going to overlap them just like this and then we'll have plenty of inserts and I'll show you what that's going to be too. I want to glue these down here and here and then I'll have to repunch these two holes. And this edge. Now when I folded these corners down, I uh, folded them shy of the bottom. You can make them go all the way to the bottom if you want, but I didn't. I think I left about, where's the ruler? Do -do 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 -do. Here's one. About a half inch. I just kind of eyeballed it and glue this one on the side and the bottom. And match up my corner and my side. sit a few minutes. I want to make sure it's even. It is. It's not hanging over. That's a good thing. I'm going to let it sit a little bit before I punch the holes because I don't want to tear it if it's damp. Oh, I need to keep the glue out. Let me lay this aside and we'll bring in the album cover and we'll put this one down. Now I have to decide exactly where I want this. 
and I want it over this way a little bit, but I don't want it all the way to the edge. So let's say about it's seven and the album cover is eight, so we only need a half inch at the bottom. And I don't think that's half inch from the cover. And yes, that'll be a half inch, so that'll be good. So just one full stripe. And I'm going to glue it at the bottom and both sides. See, that's a half inch. Yep. And that's looking pretty good. I want to make sure that's straight. So let's burnish that. And that's going to give us a triple pocket. We're going to have one, two, and three. I don't want to pull on them too hard because they're not dry yet. So there's that, and then this one, still feels a little damp, I'll give it a try, and let's hope it's fine, and we can stick it in the book for now. Okay, so all I have to do is line up this little mushroom with this hole and it will come out perfectly. Yep, it didn't tear it. Good job. Good J-O-B. Now that one's ready to go in the book. And what I want to show you is, let me put this back. I get so much stuff out, I don't have anywhere to work. In here, I have made a little tag, a little, a big tag, and I haven't embellished it yet, but that's going to go under here. And then I have this magnet, or not magnet, a uh, paper clip that I made, going to make. And what I did was I took a scrap of the artisan gray, and I put a little cut apart on the front and one on the back. And then I have a piece of regular typing paper, and I cut it just just shy of the inside of this just like that put my paper clip on it <clears throat> now I'm going to add glue to this side everybody and their brother makes paper clips and I like to make them as easy as possible but I want them to be functional and pretty too so I'm going to put this right in here. And press that down. This side needs to stay loose, remember. So we're going to put glue on this side. Don't let it get over here on this gray edge because you don't want to seal that shut. So stay away from your edge just a little bit because you don't want it to ooze over. Okay. I'm going to close this down on it. And burnish this. should still be open. Let me get a piece of something and run it up in here and make sure I didn't close it up. And there's your paper clip. 
and I am going to put this up here to take care of some of that dead space up there and you can see when you flip it over you've got something pretty on the back side cool huh okay I haven't made embellishments for this yet what is that a little net or something then I have this little tiny folder I made. I thought it was so cute and I haven't put anything on the back of it if I use it in a tuck spot like this then I'll have to cover the back but if I glue it down like this then I don't need to cover the back so it depends on how we use it I thought that was so cute and I put a little bitty tag in it Ta -da. and I just used the mini punch board and this is just a scrap of the the tan that uh, came in the simple stories uh, solid papers that I got and I I showed you that in um, in my haul it's I'm think and then I created this is the graphic 45 policy envelope and I just used their die to cut this out and then I used an oval die for the center and then I made a frame using the same oval die set I just sandwiched the plain one and the scallop one together and cut that out now I'm going to put this tan in here to hide because if I don't when you close it this is what you see you see the seam and I don't want to see that so I'm going to attach the tan to the back of this and when I close it then you'll see the finished edge it doesn't take a lot of glue covered my frame there. Close this up. Oh, I put the green up. What a dummy. Oh, I rent that. I'll have to use the green now. I'm going to look and see if I got any more of the tan because I don't like the green. Let me see if I got another piece of the tan. Because I don't like that green. was pretty dumb. I got another scrap of the tan. I'll cut out another piece. Give me just a second here. Okay. That was goofy. Okay, more glue now. the green to the green. What a goofo I am. And we'll close this. And then we can glue this down. Oops. That. And I just lightly stamped on this with that using that same stamp that I used over here. And then we can close up the bottom. And we'll have a little policy envelope we can put in it somewhere. some string on it and that'll be that so there's another embellishment all right and then I made a tiny little envelope which I'm going to use later and I'll show you that after a bit I don't know where I'm going to use this um, this is just 
I have these um, envelopes and cards, these little cards in my stash. And all this is, is I cut one of these cards in half. And I glued the sides together, put a little notch in the half, and made a pocket with it. That's all that is. It's half of one of these little things. I just cut it in half here. I glued the two sides together, put my little notch in it, inked around the edges, and then I took a scrap of this paper and made a little band in one of the cut aparts. And that's it. That is it. So there's that embellishment. And we'll use this envelope later. This is a 3x3 three three square on your punch board. And I think the first score was at 1 and 3 quarters. I'll double check and make sure. And then this is an old junk mail envelope. And I just cut out the window. And I'll show you with another envelope after a bit how I did that. It was real easy. Real easy. But I'll show you that later. So let's see if I can put this in. These things fit tight, but that's good. They'll stay in place. Okay, there's that page. So that'll turn over here. Like that. I like that. I didn't think I was going to like those. When I first saw them, I think it was last year on Creativation, or whatever they call that annual show they have. I didn't like them. But then after Michelle did it, I did like them. So, you know, I guess it just depends on who you see do it. Okay, the next thing on the next page, this is going to go here. And I've cut this. This is going to be a belly band. I'm not going to put it together right now. I just wanted to show you the layout. This is just a circle punch. Um, I think it's two inches maybe. Let me see. What did I do with that ruler? I could lose my head if it wasn't attached, I tell you. Well, let me measure. Yes, it's two inches. And this is one of the cut aparts. And I just fussy cut around it and glued it on here. And I thought it was so cute. And this is going to be a tuck spot. There's a pocket here, and then I'm going to elevate it underneath so that I can tuck stuff under it. And then we've got this little tiny envelope. It's another one of those three inch square envelopes. On this side, we are going to have, let me see where to go. We're going to have this pocket. And then this is going to be a little booklet that goes inside, but I haven't cut the paper for it yet. So that's going to be the layout for that side. All in blues. So what do you think so far? Are you loving it, maybe? I hope. I need to scoot. I guess this will that'll tuck in more. I just don't want it hanging over that and covering it. Alright, so that's what I've got so far. I will be back. Um, I will be back. Okay. <laughs> I had to stop and think what I was doing. Um, I've got to ink these pieces and get them ready to go down. And we'll make more embellishments together. I'll give you for sure the measurements on this and these. Alright, I'll be back shortly. Okay, I am ready to put the next page together. So here we go. My game plan for this is the inside of the front and back covers are both with greens. So then I'll have two blue pages, one green, and two more blue, and then we'll have the green covers. So this, these fibers keep sticking to my sweater. They need to quit. So what I have, I've done a little bit of light stenciling just to give the background a little bit more interest because it was pretty plain. And I have a... I'm going to give you the measurements of these. They're not going to be on your cut list. So you'll have to watch the tutorial. And this one is 
Let me get the ruler out of the way. This one is eight by two and a half, and it is scored at two. And then I rounded the corners, and I inked it with black soot. Now I want to be able to slide something under this, so I cut a scrap of the gray, and I glued two of them together, and I'm going to glue this at the top just so I can get something light under it. I don't want everything to be smashed down to the page. So I'm going to glue this up here and I just rounded the corners so it doesn't hang out. And then down at the bottom I've got another piece. And this one you don't have to round because the bottom's not rounded. So I'm going to glue this. I hope I'm in camera. I mean to be. But it doesn't always work out just right for me. I get carried away here. So there's that. And then on the inside, I cut little quarter inch strips. Oh, I didn't. These are half inch. I cut little quarter inch strips of dark blue artisan to put in here. So I've got some. Let me make sure they're not going to hang out. Yeah, they're short enough. And that'll give me a little bit more room in my pocket. And I haven't made any embellishments for this yet, but we'll come back and do that later. So I'm going to put this in here. Just a hair off of the edge. I don't want them to hang out because they are dark blue. And then... <clears throat> And I, ju I just cut a quarter inch strip and I cut four little pieces and glued two together for each side. So that's going to go in here. Just, just barely inside the edge. Now we can glue this closed. It's a little bit on the crooked side. Oh well, it's glued now. I don't hurt anything. I've still got room in there because it's only a quarter inch. So we'll glue that shut. Gives us a little bit of space in there. And then this is one of the border trims. And I'm just going to glue it on three sides so it'll make a little tuck spot on the pocket. And we can add something in there later. We're going to glue that down just across this little pocket here. And we'll come up with some other embellishments for it. And that is going to go right here. So we're just going to glue the top and the bottom. up a little bit more. Well, like so. Don't want to get it too high because I don't want to cover my my stencil. I think it's pretty. There's that. And this is your um, magnet from page one. You put it back on there. Well, maybe I will. There we go. We get it started right. There's that. And then I cut out two coffee cups from the die that I had in my stash. And I took my knife and just cut a little slit in it so I could glue them together and stack them. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue up under the bottom of this cup. So it stays. And this spoon is going to stick out of the top after I get it placed. But I've got these fibers that I wanted to put down here. And I'm going to have to do it with hot glue. And I hope it works. I've never used these fibers before, but I thought they were kind of neat because they look like wheat. So. I've got to cut them off though because they're a little bit too long. I don't want them to hang over the edge of the page. So let me put 
need some hot glue down here. I just think they need something to anchor them down. Oops, don't fall over. And then I'm going to put a little bundle going the other direction. Something for the coffee cups to sit on so they're not just floating in the air. Let me put some more glue down here. Hold on there, don't fall off the floor. Where's my other? I'm going to use this one. I need to push it down. Oops. See, it's not all sticking. I was afraid of that. A glue stringer. God, I hate the way they do that. All right. I've got some more here. I think I need more on the left side and then look even. I think I'm going to need a piece of um, dimensional tape when we get a piece. Uh, use a couple of pop dots under the coffee cups. Otherwise, they're not going to look right. I'll put one down here. And a couple over here. Maybe I better have a little one up at the top here. A couple of little ones. Then we'll stick the spoon in. I'm thinking out loud. <laughs> Take these backings off here. should help hold that weight down in place. Like that. And then we'll put the spoon down in there. I'm just going to use the art glitter glue on the spoon. Just like that. I want it to stick out pretty far. Okay, so that's that page. Okay, now to the other side. <clears throat> I've got so much stuff out here. This side. I'm going to do the same thing with this folder that I did with this one. I'm going to put, these are one inch pieces folded in half. And they're going to go on here. Because I need to be able to tuck more under it. And if I glue it down flat to the page, you can't get much under it. Okay, so let's put this on here with your folded edge towards the outside. Just like that. And this one. Oh, and I didn't give you the measurements of this. I'm going to give you that here before I glue it down. Let's scoot this down just a little bit more. Okay. 
this one is eight by five and a half and scored at two. And I just did a notch here and here and then I inked all around the edges. And I had some, there they are, got some blue strips for inside the pocket. Same thing we did to the other one. Oops, turn it around. I still got those fibers all over the place here. To get rid of them because they're going to be a nuisance. Move this up just a little bit. We can <coughs> glue it. <coughs> Goodness, Go glue it closed. Now we'll glue across the bottom in these two gray pieces. straight here along the bottom. This is just a circle, a two inch circle I cut out of the gray artisan. <coughs> Goodness, I got a frog in my throat tonight. Let me get these fibers, they're driving me crazy. They keep sticking to my, the knit on my sweater. Come on, get rid of these things. These are as bad as glitter on your table. Anyway, it's a two inch circle. It's a die that I had in my stash and I punched out a scalloped edge with the dark blue artisan. And this is one of the cut aparts that came like this and I just cut the, the little image out and glued it on the gray. So I'm just going to glue that straight down. I don't think it needs to be popped up. Is going to go right and get placement of my envelope right about there, just like that. And I left this open so you can tuck something under it if you want to. Make sure that's burnished down good. And then this little envelope is a three by three square and your first score mark on your punch board is at one and a quarter and you'll find those measurements on your scoreboard and I just cut it out of the design paper and then used a die that I have in my stash to cut these little note papers 
and they're just uh, embossed with lines across it and I'm going to um, oh sorry. I meant to put this little heart over here a tan heart I wanted to put on the coffee cup and I forgot it I'm put that over there get some little dots of glue on it these fibers was such a good idea or not. I might have to put some more hot glue on it. Do something. Yeah, I can see that I will. But I'll get to that in a minute. And then the envelope. Um, I don't think I want to tuck anything behind it. I think we got enough going on on this page. I'll leave it open at the top just in case. But I don't think we're going to want to put anything behind it. And we'll put this right about like that. And then I have this little... I need to punch a hole in this little tag and I'm going to put something on it. And it's going to go on the outside with this blue arrow. But I don't have anything on it yet. So let me just I'll, I'll tuck this in the envelope for now so I don't lose it. So I wanted to turn this over and that didn't look like it's glued down good. And put some more glue up under it. Might need to sit something heavy on it. Where's the stamp pad right here? Or a stamp block. I wanted to show you the other side. Give that um, block time to hold it down for a second. And then I'll flip it over. I've got some things cut out for the back side. Yeah, that's holding it. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over. And on the next page, it's going to be green, and I've just splattered it with a little bit of black and white uh, ink. Oh, paint. I used paint. And let me see. Where's my stuff for this side? Um, this one goes. This is a crisscross. And I used two strips of the tan, two strips of the design paper, and you just tuck one up under the other so that you have... Let me get a piece of something something narrow here's a strip that I cut the coffee cup out of so you'll have a tuck spot here 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 and here so you can put tags or photo mats or whatever and I'm going to mount it on a piece of the gray artisan so that I can have a tuck spot behind it, either the top or the side, either one. But you can see how they're crisscrossed in the back. I didn't have full strips, so I used what I had, but it's still covered fine in the front, and that's all that matters. So that's going to go over here. And then on this side, we're going to have a tall pocket with a little pocket on top. And I made this booklet that is directions how to make iced coffee and this piece measures oh I'll have to give you the measurements on these this one is that is six and three quarters and this is an inch and a half turned down so it's eight inches by four and I just printed this off I found it on the internet and this page is how to make iced coffees. And the next one. And I gave him some blank pages too. This one is all about uh, iced coffee recipes. 
and then I made this one, and then he's got some blank pages in there. Then I made this one that's going to go on another page, and these are the best iced coffee recipes, and it's going to go in another blue page. So I'm trying to make a little bit of this, that, and the other. Um, now I can't remember what else I had for this page, and I had it all laid out, but I'll think of it. Hmm. Well, give me a minute and I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> I got so much going on here and so much stuff on my table here. Put the sink pad up. This, I think I showed you this already. It's a little tiny pocket with a tag. This would work here. Something small. And I have this. But I think that's too big for that. I don't want to put that there. I'll think of something. And I'll get back to you on that. I have another envelope that I could put. I don't like that there, though. I'll think of something. And I'll get back to you on this green page. Alright, I'll be back shortly. Oh, wait. I forgot to give you the measurements. These strips are three inches wide. And this, um, the cardstock I'm going to put it on is six by six and a half because my page is taller than it is wide. So these strips are three by six and a half. The two that go this way are three by six and a half. The two that go this way are three by six. Okay, and then it'll mount here. Alrighty, that's it so far. I'll get back with you. This is going to go on that blue page we just did in that pocket. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, let's continue on with this green page. Here is what I have decided to do. Let me move this out of the way. This piece here, this pocket, is four and a half by seven and it's scored at a half an inch on both long sides and one short side and then I've mitered the edges or tapered it and then at the top as well and I'm going to add it to this page like that <clears throat> with some art glitter glue Well, if it comes out, I am. There we go. Down the other side. across the bottom. And I am going to put it about half inch from the bottom and from the left side. About like so. Let me see if that's straight. I don't trust myself. Needs to come down a little bit on this side. Let's see what that is. That doesn't look straight to me either. But it is. So I can press it into place. Now this little one is going to go on top of that one. And it is three and three quarters by four. Also scored at a half inch on three sides. And it is going to glue down about how much do I have? About a half inch from the bottom of that. Now, I'm not 
not going to have inserts on every one of these because I'm going to leave room for them to add more coffee recipes as they find ones they like. I'm going to add a few in here just to get them started. My grandson loves those fancy coffee drinks. I just like plain old coffee coffee. on a half an inch so I don't goof it up. There we go. And about. I'm just going to ballpark it from side to side. And I think that's about good. There we go. So we got a double pocket there. And then over here on this side, remember I told you I had these little cards and envelopes, and I cut one of the cards in half. This is the other half of the card that I cut, and I am going to put this coffee bean. I just cut a, a, a scrap, and I cut a piece off of it, and I'm going to put it on the front of here. Just over a little bit. If I can get it straight. That's always a deal with me. That looks pretty good. And then I've got one of her cut apart says iced coffee added. And that he is. So I'm going to put that on the top. a scrap of coffee dyed paper that I just scored several times so it will pull down and they can write on it and I'm just going to glue the back side of it on the inside of there Just cut it a little bit smaller than the little folder. Just like that. And I'm going to glue the back side down. I hope I'm in frame. I didn't even look to see. Let me see, am I? Not very good. Let me move it up some more. I'm going to put this over here. Just like so. Try to make sure to keep it out of the way of these punches here. And that is going to go there. And then they'll be able to pull it down and make some notes on there. I love the little spots. I think that's cool. Alright. Now for down here, I'm just going to make a small cluster just to take up the extra space and give it some pretty. So I'm going to put this about here. And then this green oval. And this just came out of another um, piece that I cut an oval out of and I saved this. And I'm going to put it here. About like so. And then I've got a piece of lace. And I'll put it down. And a die cut that's got a coffee cup on it. that here and then I have a word 
what did I do with my word? Um, I knocked it on the floor. Hold on. It says, <clears throat> rise and shine. And I want to ink it in feathered twigs. find something else that <clears throat> that I want to add. I am going to put a button on here. And I don't know if it'll stay with our glitter glue. It, oops, it should. Right there. If it doesn't, I'll, whoops. If it doesn't, I'll come back and put some Something else on it. I'm going to put plenty of glue for right now and add it right there. That should be good. And I'm going to put a Velcro dot under here to hold that shut. Now this is the other one I showed you and we, I just stuck a couple cut aparts in there and a couple small tags. I haven't done anything with them yet, but that's going to be the next one. And I can't turn this over to share with you what I have changed over here, but I will after a while until my button dries. So I am going to get started on the next page, and then I will be back again. All right, and it's going to be blue next time. Okay, I've got the next page laid out for you. I'm going to glue it down off screen, but I want to show it to you and make sure you've got the measurements. Get some of this junk out of the way. Here's the game plan. This is, well, actually, let me take the book out of the way because it's taken too much space. I'll just show you the page. Here's the page. Don't need all this stuff, do I? Alright, this little folder, and I printed out some, I think I showed you this earlier, the iced coffee recipes, and this little folder is four by five and a quarter, and it's scored on three sides, and then I just put a notch in it, and I inked it with uh, gathered twigs. And it's going to go down here with this iced coffee recipe in it. And I have another one of those little 3x3 uh, three three envelopes. I think that's what they were. Oh, no, they're 4x4. Four four. My mistake. It's going to go down here. I don't know what I'm going to put in it yet. Then I printed out time for coffee just on my word processor. You can use whichever one you use. Let me see, where's 12 o'clock? Here's 12 o'clock. This is the graphic 45 clock face. I've got to ink it yet. And then I cut out a circle with the die head in my stash to go in the middle. I've got glue on me. It looks like a snake peeling. I'm going to put that in the center with some clock hands that I had in my stash. And then right across the bottom it's going to say time for coffee and this is going to go down here that is the left side of that page and on the right side I have a big old belly band this is a 12 inch by 3 inch and I scored it in half so that it wraps around to the back side so we'll have a belly band over here as well this is a glassine bag that I'm going to put some stuff in I think it probably came in one of my kits from Tamar with some stuff in it because she would a lot of times send ribbon and embellishments and that type of thing. But I coffee dyed it and it came unglued so I've got to, I've got to glue it back together before I can use it. But it's going to go in here with some kind of inserts. This is just a little piece of burlap ribbon I had in my stash. Been coffee dyed. I'm going to put it down there with this little uh, cut apart it says a day without coffee is like 
just I can't read it it's tiny I guess I need glasses I used to wear glasses years ago and I haven't had them since I had cataract surgery so maybe I need them again and this is a piece of the border trim and this is going to go here and I'll come up with something else for there I'm not sure what yet but that's how that page is going to lay out. I'll glue it down and then we'll go from there. Alright, I'll be back shortly. Alright, here we go again. Update on this page. This is where we were at um, last time I got together with you. So what I did was I cut um, a graphic 45 clock face out there. And I put it on some of the brown that uh, is with this collection right here I just cut out a circle with a die because it didn't show up very well I had these old clock hands in my stash and I printed out on my uh, word processing program time for coffee and just glued that across there and then we talked about these envelopes before and I just put some scrap coffee dyed paper in there and this is the tag I showed you before that's got the best iced coffee recipes on it then I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Now I haven't decorated this page yet. This is kind of tight. I guess it'll loosen up after a while. Um, this needs more decoration, which I'll get later, but I wanted to show you. Um, this is, um, I think we talked, we may have done this one together. It's, it's been a while and I've done forgotten. But I made a little notebook here. I told, <clears throat> excuse me, told you I was going to do that. And I just closed it with Velcro, and I've never used Velcro before. Oh, it came completely off of the page. That's pretty stout stuff. Huh. Anyway, it came completely off. And I just did an accordion in here. There, to make it close. Just coffee dyed. Wonder. That stuff's pretty stout. Oh, goodness gracious. Try it again. Hopefully it'll work better. Okay, there's that. Okay, this is that double pocket we did. And this is just three different little, two pieces of cardstock, one of the embellishments, a button, and a piece of lace. And it says Rise and Shine. And then this is the page where these are tight. I guess they'll loosen up after a while. There's the other pocket that I had the little notepads in. I've got to make something for this yet. Excuse me a second. Okay. I took that, those fibers out of here. I did not like them. I don't know what it was. I think it was the thickness actually. So I just cut out two coffee cups and a spoon and then a little tiny one and I cut it off a corner a little piece of a doily and put it down here so it looked like a tablecloth. And then this tag needs some embellishment on it. So we'll get there. But I wanted to update you on what I've made so far. Okay. Now this one this this is the next one we talked about. And this is a 3 by 12 strip. I just scored it at 6 and wrapped it around the book so the other half will be back here. I added a piece of burlap. I don't know if you can see this. Let me get the book out of the way so I can move it over. I just glued down a piece of burlap, one of the cut aparts, and three little buttons. Now I have a tag that I'm going to put in there and it is four by get a measurement on that seven and a quarter and I cut a little pocket out of a scrap from the collection and I'm just going to put it at the bottom and I quite a while back I bought a laminator <clears throat> gosh I've got a frog in my throat um, anyway I had not used it at all and I kept thinking, you know, I need to get that out. I need to do something with it. So today I finally broke it out. 
and I took some of the small embellishments and ran them through the laminator and I'm going to stick them in this little pocket. I think it'll be really cute. So I'm going to put this right at the bottom. Get that ruler out of the way. bottom. Yes, I am. And I want to put something up at the top, but I just don't know what that's going to be yet. But, um, what did I do with those? Here they are. I thought they were so cute. This one says, if you love me, bring me coffee. This one's just got a picture of coffee. And I like this one for the color. So we'll put those in there. And I think that'll be cute in there. And then that's going to go down in here like so. And then I have, I first had um, a large glassine bag in here and it was really overpowering. So I decided to put a smaller one in here probably should have put it in there first there and I'll fill it up with something so that will take care of this side I may decide to add something here I'm just not really sure yet but I wanted to show you around on the other side <coughs> I created a little notepad and I just took a piece of the scrap and ran it through my sewing machine with several thicknesses of this and I just splattered old coffee paper on white typing paper then I have a piece of the brown that is um, six and five eighths by three. And then these two pieces should be three. Yep. Three by five and three by three. And I scored each of them at half an inch. The small one on the right side and the larger one on the left side. And I'm going to put these across here and glue them down to make a little booklet. And then I'm going to put this on the inside. Right here. And I don't know what I'll put over here. Something I'm sure. <coughs> so, let me... Where's my scissors? I'd lose my head if it wasn't hooked on. There they are. So I'm just going to miter these top corners. And now I have not inked them. Shame on me. I should have had that done. But it won't take but a minute. And I'll do these with the gathered twigs. Some of this stuff looks better with black and some looks better with brown so I've used a combination of both on this. There's that. I know Tim Holtz tells you not to run your dauber along the edge but I do anyway. I know it wears down the, the life of the pad but Sometimes I look at it and I can still see white, and I don't like that, so that's why I do it that way. Now let's do the brown, and then we can put it together. But it, it does shorten life of this felt pad. I know that. But I do it anyway. Okay. Well, let's put some glue and I'm going to attach it to the back side of the brown because it's going to be glued down so it's not going to show. Move 
this one on the other side. to put, I wonder if that'll fit in here, that would fit in here, I had planned to put Velcro on it, but after that last one, I don't know that I want to do Velcro, and this is not exactly straight, better, I think I'm going to stay with it right here. Although I do like it over here. It stands out much better. Mm. I think I might put it over here. But then, well, I, I will. <coughs> it's getting hot in here. I'm going to have to turn my air conditioner back on. Hey, the weather this year has been really weird. We've already been through winter and we've hardly ever used any heat at all. I guess that's a good thing, though. Burnish that down. And cut this thread. I know a lot of people like the loose threads, but that's that's not my jam. I'm gonna put a couple clips on here since this has got some thickness to it. Where's another one? <sighs> flat yet. That, that is going to go, I don't know if it's going to go there or not. I'm not sure. I'm going to let it dry first is what I'm going to do. And then, um, the next page, this goes with that. So we'll have one more gray and then it'll go to green for the back so there you go so I got some more things to cut out and do I did set aside um, oops two sheets of this for the cover I think it is so pretty and that is what I'm going to use on the cover so I will get some more stuff cut out I have a few things cut out in green and I'm going to show you when we get there how to do this and how to do this little doogee floppy here. So I will be back shortly. Okie dokie. Alrighty, let's put together the base, the base pages for these last two. And then we'll have to backtrack and do some more embellishing and what have you. Now this one we were working on together. And I just took one of these little envelopes that I had in my stash and I cut it off even with this edge here and just added some design paper to it so it makes a little pocket. And then we'll have a place that we can stick tags or what have you. This is not going to be the thing for it because I guess it'd be okay in there, but I don't want green on this page. But it'll just show you how it works. So that'll be the next page in there. And then this will be the opposite side of that. And I've just done a little stenciling just to kind of take some of the monotony away from the background. And I drew myself a line. Let's see how far off the edge it is. I don't remember. It is an two and a quarter. And I cut me a piece that is three and a quarter by 
probably nine. Yes, nine. I've scored both ends at a half. And I just added these little, oh no, I cut it at eight, sorry. And then I cut one inch strips and made myself some tabs so I'd have more room inside the pockets. And I'm going to attach this even with that line. And then this one will go below it so we'll have a double pocket. Okay, so we're just going to add glue to these little tabs here. should miter this top edge just a hair just so it doesn't hang out and on this side and I just eyeballed where to put this notch gonna line that up at the top and the bottom and we'll burnish that down whoops don't do that and see it bows just a little bit so that'll give us room in the pocket then this one is also at eight and the depth of it is three and a half and then I added a piece at the bottom and I did put some scotch tape along there so that when I put something in the pocket it won't catch on this edge so we will glue these down plenty of pockets and places to put other stuff and I'm going to try to print some more stuff off the internet with different coffee recipes and things but I just haven't had the time to research all of it yet there's a lot of sites out there that give you really neat ideas and I always look for the free ones sure this is even with the bottom and then we'll burnish this down I'm going to check the bottom yes it's fine so that'll be our pockets on that page and then when we flip it over this is going to be opposite of the um, back cover so I'm going to put a double pocket on here and I'm going to offset it a little bit towards the left oh, and I didn't give you the measurements of this I better do that real quick seven by six scored at a half on three sides and I'm going to put it over this way maybe I'll do about like that that looks pretty good right there let me see if I got that straight at the bottom I'm a little compromised there just a hair okay burnish those down and then I've got this little piece here and this was let me show you it's just a scrap and it is eight by three and a half and I folded it like a trifold and I put a notch here and a notch here so I'm going to just glue this little piece right here 
actually. I, and I had to go in here and notch that just so it doesn't show. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue right here because I don't want to overlap it. And we're going to put glue down at the bottom to close it up. So that is going to close that way. And this will close over the top of it. Like that. So then we'll have an insertion here, one here, and one behind. So that'll be three. So I'm just going to glue it on both long sides and the bottom. And we're going to put it right about here. Actually, I'm going to put it like that. Right there. So more embellishing to do on that. <coughs> and when that goes in the book, it will be opposite of the cover. And I have a piece of the gray artisan that is seven by seven. And the, th the half inch halfway point is three and a half inches. So I just put my thumbnail here and I folded it down at three and a half and then burnished it. And same way with this. And it brings them right to the center. And if I glue it in like this, let me see, this is, I need to move it up just a little bit to make it even. About like that. And I'm going to glue it down here and here. So I've got a tuck spot underneath on both sides, one here on both sides. So here and here. Okay. So down like that. Down like that. Now I think I want to put this in the center because I don't want to close it up completely. And I don't know how well this glue is going to hold and laminate. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Let me take that off. I don't want to glue it shut. So let's put some glue right up here. And right down here. Oops. And we'll center this as best I can. Like that. And I'm going to put a stamp block on it and let it sit there for a little while while I make some more embellishments. And then we'll do some more of those together. I did want to show you though, um, I just feel like my pages aren't turning as smoothly as they should. And I think maybe my um, discs might be thicker than the ones Michelle used. Now, I trimmed a little bit off of these and they do turn better. They were pretty stiff before. So what I did was I just took my little snips. Let's do this one first. And I just went inside. See how narrow that is? And I think my discs are thicker than that. So I just took off a little snip out of each side just to make that slot a little wider. I don't want to take too much off. Just a hair. It makes it a little bit wider so it turns easier. Well, if I can get in there. I don't want to get too much. Just a hair. Oops. And then I'm going to 
and put it in the book. See, and I think it turns a lot better that way. It's getting kind of full. Alright, so that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to trim this last one down. And then I'll make some more embellishments, and I'll make sure to come back and give you any measurements of anything that I make so that you can duplicate them if you if you want to. All right, I'll be back shortly. Okay, uh, where we stopped last time was assembling these two pages. All I have done is ink the edges of this larger pocket. I added a tag. And then this is the smaller pocket I showed you, all inked up. Here's a little tag inside. This has a piece of lace, um, a tag, and a um, mushroom embellishment. Those were in my stash, and then I added a couple more of those little pages from um, a die that I have. <clears throat> and this is a die that is in my stash. And then on this side, if you notice, I got in a hurry and I had, didn't ink this before I put it down, so I just put a piece of paper up against the edges and lightly inked it. And then this one you can stick underneath and, you know, do the same way here. Stick it inside and ink your edges a little bit. It gives you a little more definition. That's a way to get around that if you get in a hurry like I did. And then this one we made... Um, when I made the front cover, and this is just a graphic 45 coin envelope, and I haven't put the string on the back yet. I need to do that. And I just used an oval die from my stash and cut a window in it. And this one is just one of the cut aparts from the collection. And then I made a couple small tags, added one of the embellishments from the collection with a piece of ribbon and some tulle. And this one is down here. And then uh, this is another one of the um, cut aparts that I ran through my laminator. And that's all. That is everything. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you think this is something you would like to make, I would love to see your finished project if you would share it with us. Thanks. Whoops. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. And I will see you back soon. Bye.